So this journey, this struggle, it's critical. Why? Because it includes the possibility of failure. Failure is important. Why? Because that's how we grow. That's how we get better. Hey everybody, Everett Christopher here, AKA Photo Loco. Thank you so much for joining today and I hope you're having an awesome day. Today's topic, I wanted to discuss AI and how it might negatively affect the pursuance of art. So first of all, what are we talking about? AI, we're talking about things like mid-journey and other intelligences, artificial intelligences that have surfaced within the last couple of years and they are amazing tools. Some of them, like Generative Fill and Photoshop, are game changers and things that I have used as tools to fix things. So I'm not going to you know, go into detail. If you're not aware of artificial intelligence at this point, I would Google it. There's some fascinating things to learn. The concern that arose within me surrounding all of this is that AI could potentially remove the journey and the struggle that is artwork. Because... I started thinking about this one day and it really came down to the question of what is artwork? That's a pretty broad question and it's a tough question because artwork can mean different things to different people. But one thing that I think is universal about it is that artwork is a struggle. If there's anything that artwork promises is that you're going to go down a pathway, you're going to go on a journey and that journey is going to include struggle. Just to give you some examples, there are times when I'm editing a photo or creating a composite and I have an internal struggle of how I want to proceed creatively. It happens a lot with my gel photography, my gel photos when I'm doing editing. There's so many options to choose from when it comes to color and color affects mood. It literally will affect the viewer depending on the color. Sometimes there's external elements that might affect people. I've had people tell me that they've seen other photographers work and then they just felt like giving up because they didn't think they would ever get to that level, right? And there's so many other types of struggling that people do. I can't list them all. But while we're doing that, we're, we're, we're supposed to be attempting to create something beautiful, something maybe even ugly. But, you know, ugliness, of course, can have its own element of beauty. Something rememberable, something hopefully unique and maybe even one of a kind. I think a lot of photographers and artists simply want their work to resonate with others and perhaps establish connections with those people. None of that is easy. It's supposed to be hard. It is difficult. It can be very rewarding, but there is certainly a struggle. So this journey that we go down, this struggle, it's critical. Why? Because it includes the possibility of failure. Failure is important. Why? Because that's how we grow. That's how we get better. It's just like life. Life is a struggle for almost everyone on the planet. It can suck. Artwork is a struggle, and it can suck. So you might think to yourself, okay, so how does, how, how does this relate to AI? Well, AI can completely remove that journey. It removes that struggle. It's near instantaneous. That's what it was meant for, let's be honest. It's meant for instant, quick, swift results. Automation AI, it's all about being more efficient. But as a side effect, when it comes to artwork, it removes that struggle, which damages the entire process of creating art. So what's even more bewildering to me is that people use artificial intelligences like Midjourney, and I'm talking peer photographers. I'm not talking about just like non-artists or non-photographers. I'm talking about people who are artists and in my world, photographers. They will use Midjourney and then claim that they created it. And they did not. Sorry, but that's the truth. Adding a few prompts to an interface and then having an intelligence, however rudimentary that intelligence might be, that is not you creating the art. That would be like if someone approached me and said, Everett, I want you to take a picture of a bird, like an American bald eagle. And I would like it flying. And hopefully the sky, I would like the sky to be blue. So shoot it during the daytime, photograph it during the daytime. And I said, great. And then I go out and I capture an eagle flying amidst a blue sky. And it's a beautiful shot. And I go home and I edit it maybe boost the colors a little bit, do some sharpening, and just kind of complete the whole post-production process, and then I deliver it to the client. It would be just like then, at that point, if that client told everyone in, his, in their social circle, social media, friends and family, that they are the ones who created that artwork. 
That's the analogy I use. Any level of intelligence, you know, you have to respect it. And to me, it's just a sign of disrespect. So the, the people that use Midjourney to create what they call their own art, they're really, they're, it's really two things going wrong with them. They, they are, they're not creating the art that they say they are. That's number one. So they're missing out on that struggle, right? They're missing out on the whole journey of creating art. And then they're taking credit for something that they didn't create. Again, adding a few words, a few prompts, and then pressing enter. You're not an artist. That's not your artwork. So then it's like, okay, when can we use AI? You can use AI anytime you want. It's a free country. As long as you're okay with the knowledge that you're not going to learn anything, you're missing out on the journey, you're missing out on the struggle. As long as you realize that that's not really your artwork. You may have conceptualized something, but... The creator is mid-journey, or it's going to be one of these other artificial intelligences that you're using. And you are using it. Let's be clear. You're using it. You're using it to have that artwork created. And so for me, you know, the only time I use it is if, if, if I were okay with it being a part of my process. And I also gave credit where credit's due. So here's some examples. Like in Photoshop, um, sometimes I might have a bad crop. Let's say... In fact, there is a video that I talk about when I use generative fill to fix things, and one of them is a crop issue. And it was because I was raising up my camera with my very heavy 200 2.0 lens, and the couple was kissing and they were laughing, and it was a fleeting moment. So I just very quickly took the shot, but unfortunately the crop sucked. The framing was terrible. So I used AI to build me some extra room based off the surrounding area, and it built it kind of it kind of added on to the fence that they were leaning on and added on some grass and i was able to crop it afterwards and it saved the photo another example of how i use ai is retouch for me so retouch retouch for me is a company that creates a plugin for photoshop they have a ton of them there's two that i use one is dodge and burn and the other one is healing and i use those two for my headshot photographs and it's mainly because I don't really consider my headshot photography creative. Like I'm not exercising anything necessarily creative from the creative part of my brain to create headshots. They're pretty straightforward. They're just, you know, basic business headshots. Clients are usually in and out pretty quickly. And then the post-production, I use that, use retouch for me to knock out the, the editing and it's awesome, but I will never use it for anything creative. And that's the difference. That's a big difference between what I use it for and what these other people are using it for to create their art. And, you know, it's, it's simply not. I would never use it for anything creative on, on my end, including my gels, my avant-garde stuff, anything that I do considered creative. My composites, that's all going to be me. Why? Well, because I cherish the artwork and I cherish the struggle and I embrace it because I want to get better. And yes, I want you to embrace the journey, accept the struggle and fail so that you can get better too. Okay guys, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.